Hello everyone. Welcome to Voice of the Wild, an environment and wildlife podcast initiative by Naturalist Foundation. This is the second season, episode 8 of the podcast. With this podcast, we bring you closer to the world of wildlife conservation, scientific research and government environmental policies. I am Muskan Fakir and I'll be your speaker for today. Today I will be talking about volcanic eruptions in Indonesia's Mount Sinabang, collapsing of the last fully intact Arctic ice shelf in Canada, and lastly, lion dolphin conservation projects announced by PM Narendra Modi. So, without making you all wait, let's get started. Indonesia is home to many volcanoes and earthquakes due to its position on the Ring of Fire. Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped region that traces the edges of tectonic plates around the Pacific Ocean. This place hosts 90% of the world's recorded earthquakes and 75% of all active volcanoes. There are in total 147 volcanoes in Indonesia out of which 79 are active. A recent eruption that took place in Indonesia's Mount Sinabang, situated in one of the islands of North Sumatra, sent a 16,000 feet huge cloud of smoke and ash into the air, leaving places nearby covered in dust. This volcanic mountain that came back to life in 2010 for the first time in 400 years has remained active since. 16 people were killed in an eruption that took place in 2014 and seven more in another eruption that took place in 2018 volcanoes are one of the most destructive forces of nature volcanoes are distributed all around our planet out of which 1500 active volcanoes can be found across the world and innumerable found on the ocean floor Almost 75% of planet's volcanoes, whether on land or under water, are located where tectonic plates meet. But you may wonder, why do volcanoes erupt? The journey of activation of a volcano begins deep underground in the Earth's heart, known as the core. The core, which burns as hot as the surface of the sun, transfers its heat to its surrounding rocky mantle. The heat melts some of the rocks around. This molten rock forms magma, which is lighter than the surrounding solid rocky mantle layer. The magma then escapes through vents or gaps on the Earth's crust, causing volcanic eruption. This erupted magma is called as lava, and it can reach temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Not all volcanic eruptions are explosive, since It depends on the composition of the magma. When magma is runny and thick, it allows gases to escape. So the magma that has erupted will flow out towards the surface. On the other hand, if the magma is dense and thick, gases can't escape, which builds up pressure causing it to escape into a violent explosion. As per research conducted Comparing eruptions that took place in Indonesia and US since 2014, Indonesia experienced an average of 8 eruptions per year, and USA experienced an average of 3.5 eruptions per year. So why is Indonesia more prone to eruption and how threatening can it be? Indonesia being the fourth most densely populated country in the world, has large population living on and around active volcanoes nearly 60 million people or 30% of indonesia's population is found within a range of 30 kilometers of an active volcano some of its important infrastructures such as airports ports and roads also lie close to an active volcano most fatal incidents caused by eruptions fall within this distance According to the US Center of Disease Control and Prevention, most common cause of death from a volcanic eruption is suffocation, making people with respiratory conditions such as asthma and chronic lung disease more susceptible. People living close by are also at high risk of exposure to small ash particles 
that can be irritating to the eye and contaminate food and water sources. They pose danger not only to the people on ground but planes that fly across Indonesia as well. Indonesian airports are shut down at least three times due to eruptions causing huge loss to tourism industry. To avoid risk by eruptions nearby, scientists use seismometers to study earthquakes underneath the volcano which are usually caused before an eruption due to magma activity. However, this is highly uncertain way to predict an eruption and the magnitude of explosion and gas emission is not known. Scientists continue to work to improve the accuracy of their predictions. The Indonesian government is doing their best by informing people to stay clear of the area near Mount Sinabung as volcanologists predict more eruptions in coming days. Some calamities can't be avoided, but we can be prepared for it if we work together. Before diving into another topic, let me tell you what are ice shells and their importance. Unlike glaciers, ice shells are part of the ocean. They are important floating sheets of ice that connect to landmass. Ice shells grow when they gain ice from the land and shrink occasionally when icebergs trim off their edges. This give and take helps them maintain dynamic stability. Most of the world's ice shells are found on the coast of Antarctica. As far as Canada is concerned, the northern coast of Canada's Ellesmere Island is home to several well-known ice shells including the Markham and the Wardhunt ice shell. Now, looking back at the recent report on Canada's last intact ice shell, much of this intact ice shell has broken apart into massive ice land. This 4000 year old villain ice shelf on northwestern edge of Ellesmere Island has been country's last intact ice shelf until the end of July. Satellite photo showed that 43% of it had broken off and is almost as huge as a city. Although collapsing of ice shelf is a natural phenomenon, but in the last 30 years, ice shelves on the Antarctic Peninsula and along the north coast of Canada has experienced a rapid disintegration. In March 2008, the Wilkins Ice Shelf in Antarctica escaped by more than 400 square kilometers. Later that summer, several ice shelves along Ellesmere Island in North Canada broke up in a matter of days. Without a doubt, this is an impact of climate change. The ice shells are melting from both hot air above and warmer waters below. Canada used to have a large continuous ice shelf across the northern coast of Ellesmere Island, but since 2005, it has been down to six remaining ice shells. This is very concerning as more of the ice sheets end up into the ocean the sea level rises much faster. We know that ocean has already risen to 19 centimeters in the last century at the rate of about 1 to 3 mm per year and the melting has already set in motion is predicted to raise them another meter by the end of the century at minimum even if we stop all emissions today. So, now the question arises of what are experts trying to do about it and how can we be a part of it? In December 2015, 195 countries met in Paris to sign an agreement to keep global warming below 2 degrees. Countries that sign the Paris Agreement will begin moving from fossil fuels to renewable energies with the goal of reducing emissions to eventually reach net zero emission by 2050. Some scientists suggest that pumping colossal amount of ocean water onto the West Antarctic ice sheet could stop its collapse and causing drastic sea level rise. But the fix could be extremely expensive, incredibly hard to carry out and risk potentially devastating impact for the region's unique ecosystem. It will be quite challenging to attempt to halt ice shelf collapse through direct human interaction. 
The priority for limiting sea level rise still remains by cutting greenhouse gas emission as much as possible. One piece of good news during this pandemic is that after the success of Project Tiger and Project Elephant, we are getting projects for lions and dolphins as well. PM Narendra Modi, during his speech on Independence Day, announced that the central government will launch biodiversity conservation projects for Asiatic lions and Gangetic dolphins. These projects are supposed to protect the species in their natural habitat. PM Modi also stated that the tiger population in India has increased over the year and India has shown that the march towards development is possible by balancing the environment. Both the projects will give a boost to the biodiversity, create employment opportunities and an attraction for tourism. There has been a reduction in the population of Asiatic lions and Gangetic dolphins in the past few years. These animals are endangered species. Endangered species means that they are at risk of extinction due to decrease in their population. This decrease in the population may have occurred due to the loss of habitat or climate change. Here are some facts about Asiatic lions and details about the project. Asiatic lions belong to the category of pantherine cats. India inhabits five categories of pantherine cats that include Bengal tiger, snow leopard, Indian leopard, clouded leopard and Asiatic lion. Once Asiatic lions were distributed from the state of West Bengal in the east to Madhya Pradesh in central India. But at present, Gir National Park in Gujarat is the only place where these majestic creatures reside. The last surviving population of Asiatic lions is in a dense area of dry deciduous forest and open grassy scrubland in the southwestern part of Saurashtra region of Gujarat. Asiatic lions is listed as endangered on the IUCN red list. Project Lion will be undertaken by the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Climate Change. It will involve the conservation of Asiatic lions and its habitat. The project will involve habitat development by engaging modern technologies, addressing the issues of disease in lion and its associated species through veterinarian care and advanced research. The project will also be addressing the human-wildlife conflict which will involve local communities living nearby and will also provide livelihood opportunities. A year back, India had launched the Asiatic Lion Conservation Project with a budgetary contribution of Rs 98 crores from the central government. Earlier, the project was approved for three financial years supporting the financial aspect while the recent project announced by PM Modi will not only entail the enhanced duration and finances, but also address all the issues required to conserve a species. Asiatic lions have been confined to Gir National Park and its surrounding environment. The Gujarat Forest Department in June 2020 had reported an increase of 29% in the population of Asiatic lions from 525 in 2015 to 674 in 2020. An increase of 36% of their distributed area has also been observed. Experts have been suggesting the introduction of species outside Gujarat for long-term conservation of Asiatic lions. Now, some facts about Gangetic dolphins and details about their project. Gangetic dolphins inhibit Ganga and Brahmaputra river and their tributaries in Nepal, India and Bangladesh. Gangetic dolphins can only live in fresh water and is essentially blind. In 2010, the Indian government named Ganges River Dolphin as its national aquatic animal. It acts as an ideal ecological indicator of a healthy riverine ecosystem. In India, they are distributed in Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. 
the gangetic dolphin act as an indicator species for the overall conditions of the ecosystem as they are extremely vulnerable to changes in water quality at present there are about 3500 gangetic dolphins in india project dolphin will aim at the protection and conservation of dolphins in the freshwater and marine ecosystem of the country it will involve the conservation of aquatic habitats and dolphins through the use of advanced technology and rules against poaching this project will also help us in reduction of pollution in rivers and ocean it will also help us improve livelihood of fishermen and also engage people like us in conservation activities and policies further it will help promote tourism opportunities toward the end let's all hope for an ecologically balanced sustainable development in india and pray for successful outcome of these projects i hope all of you enjoyed this podcast we will keep posting such content every week please like share and subscribe or follow us to stay updated also please support us on patreon to show appreciation towards our young team that creates and provides such informative content Link is mentioned below in description. Thank you and see you next time.